Hi guys, it's so good to see you again today. We're going to do something, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really simple today. See my ring? Well, one of the biggest questions I ever, ever, ever get asked on these videos is what the heck are these? Bisu, what is that ring you're wearing on your finger? Well, <clears throat> today I'm going to explain it to you. It is called a jumpy tool or a jump ring turning tool. And yes, you can buy them at bisuboutiques.com. They cost a whole dollar ninety-five. Let me tell you what. Whether you get them from me or you get them from who knows who cares. Get them. You need them. Some people have gotten so used to using two pair of pliers that you know they don't care anymore and they don't. But let me tell you what, I used two pairs of pliers for a long time. And once I got these, my life changed. <laughs> it did. So anyway, I'm going to stop being silly and I'm going to just invite you on over here and show you very quickly how these things work. Because some people have said they have difficulty with them, they don't get them. And there are just a couple of little things that maybe they're missing. So come over here and I'll show you what that might be. Okay, Javi says, let's go. So let's go. Lights, action, camera. This is so simple, guys, but I think a lot of the problem that those who are having difficulty using the jumping tool are having is the leverage situation, not putting it on the right finger for them, as you do put it on your finger. Let me just do a quick overview and not take for granted that there's anything that you already know about it. Okay, let me take them off. I got them in both hands. Sometimes, sometimes I go double-fisted, but anyway, you'll see that on the one side is a very wide slot, and that's, of course, for your fatter jumps, and ours tend to be 18-gauge, so I use this, <coughs> excuse me, I use this wider slot the most frequently. Then on the other side, you'll see they have two more slots, and this is for much narrower gauge very small jump rings. I almost never use this slot here at the bottom. I mean, I could just barely get my fingernail in it. It's so skimpy. But this one for us, you know, you know those little 4x3 ovals that you need to do your real fine chain or 2x3, not not 2x4x3s, yeah. Um, they're good for this one, the wider one at the top. Okay, so it's just the slots to put the ring into, okay? So let me just set this one aside. Now for me and my small hands, well, they're not so small as they are short. <laughs> anyway, the middle finger, second knuckle is best. I get the best leverage here. Some like it here. Some even use it on their thumb. That I tried. I, I can't do that. But hey, you know, whatever works for you. I always have it here, okay? So now, let's just practice opening a jump ring using it. You pick up your jump. Now, this is a thicker 18 gauge, so, and I'm using this wide end. I want to get it nice and square and straight on there. Pick it up, and the wolfy pliers have a little notch at the end. makes it easier to hold it. I think we have a few of these left. We don't have the full sets, but anyway, I swear by these, the wolf tools. You're so awesome. The problem is half the time the supplier's out of them, so ugh. But anyway, they're wonderful if you can find them someplace. If I don't have them, all right, back to the subject. You stick it in here, but you don't stick it in dead straight on. Some people do that, and then they struggle with it. It just seems like using angles is the best way to go. I might go back to the old physical science element things that we learned back in we were sophomores. I didn't learn too good because I failed, but I know there were things about inclines and all that. So maybe it has to do with leverage that way, but it is leverage. You stick it in like this. You see that, guys? Can you see this? Okay, you don't put it in straight on like that. It's really hard to get the right leverage on. Put it in like this, like the earth turning on its axis. 
you know how it's not straight up and down. Okay, so put it in like that. Get your leverage going and open. Okay, now you guys do know that you never open a jump ring by pulling it side to side like, say I was to do this and then pull it open this way by pulling this way. Don't ever do that. Because what you're going to do is you're going to burn through a whole bunch of jump rings. You're not going to get them to be able to close straight without a whole lot of effort. They're going to be all out of whack, and you're not going to be able to make quality work. That's not how it goes. It goes like this. Close it. I just push it back over. My jumps have this little notch in them at the end so it's kind of a little bit easier to tell if they're close. You want to get that jump as close as you can possibly get it till it's just as flush as it can be. Okay, which I think I have, maybe not quite. It's hard to tell there's a little bit of glare here. But yeah, I think it's pretty much done. But that's what you want to do. That's your optimum, okay? So you close it like that. Once again, open. Close. You use your hand. Let me. Do, I don't want to work this one too much because if I do, then it will get wonky. The more you open and shut jump rings, it's not good. You, you want to get to the place where you only have to open it one time and shut it one time. So see, you can see this one's a little bit out of kilter the way it's made. A little bit, can you see? It's not quite flush. All right, let's just open it and see what we can do about that. We're going to put it in here and again, not straight dead in like this and hold your hand down maybe. Don't, you, you, I do it up like here too. But sometimes holding your hand down helps. And then open. See? Now I'm going to close. Put my hand back down and get more leverage. And yep. See? I got it closed. Just like that. You use leverage. Let me do it one more time. Get a new one. Good thing jump rings are cheap, huh? But still, you don't want to blow all your jump rings because you don't open and close them right, right? Okay, so once again, using leverage of my this hand, open, close. So yes, I do twist my hand a little bit. Or if I want to go up like this, if this is better for you guys, you know, hold your arms up off the table, then you might move your hand with it. This might work for you better. See, move your hand with it. So if you're almost using your other hand, the one with the ring on it, like a pair of pliers would. But these pliers hold them and your hand is doing the work. Okay? It's as simple as that. If you're having difficulty with it, I would suggest that you get a folding table and put some good Netflix on and watch a movie and just practice doing it over and over again while you're watching a movie. So you stay calm and you don't get all frustrated. If you just remember that you're going to go back and forth, you're good to go. Now, just to show you how it moves along real quick. See, this is like that. How it moves along real quick. I'm going to take some of these gold jumps, and I'm going to hook these three up. They're not the white thing, but I'll take them off later. I'll just cut them loose later, but I'll just show you. Now, for this, I think we said we wanted to do eights because it would um, lock up. You wouldn't have enough movement in between the pieces. This was from the last video if you guys watched it. If not, you might want to go back one and see the assemblage project that we did there. We had two videos on it. It's a really cool um, video and you can do it a whole lot of different ways. But anyway, this again is how to hook up the little filigree. I just opened it. Now I'm going to take this and put it through the one corner and then this one through the other corner. Take it and using leverage just close it. Bingo, bango, done. Now normally when I do this project, if you go back to that video, you'll see I normally jump double double jump ring it. Okay? Sometimes for strength that's a good idea. And it's not a bad look. You know, that's how they make um, certain types of chain. This is double jump ringing. Oh. Open again. Goes through here. Goes through here. And now we're going to close it. Voila. The trick is to eyeball it and make sure that you have it flush. You know, if you if you close your jumps and you don't have quite like, can you see that? It's real easy to get your jump left open like that. Okay, that's not a good secure closure. 
that means that the piece down the road, especially if it has any weight to it, is probably going to pull apart and it's going to look like heck when you take a photo. It's going to say, this person did not finish the job. Because I'll tell you what, when you take a minute to photograph your jewelry, that's when you will see all the mistakes jumping out because you'll be looking at it like somebody else. And this is one of the first things you want to look for when you photograph jewelry. Did I get my jumps closed? Because if you didn't, you better stop what you're doing and go back and get them fixed up, which is what I'm going to do right now. Get that flush, okay? As flush as you can. You always, always, always want to check your finish work because that's a proof of the pudding. And being honest, looking at this now from this angle, I could have maybe got this one a little bit better. Yep, because there's a bit of space there. Do you see that? A bit of space there. Let's see if I can get in there a little bit tighter. Just move it, oops, just move it back. And then just, ah, come on. Sometimes it's a little clumsy, yeah, especially if you've got something hanging off of it. Okay, get it in there. Get it at that angle. I find at the angle I can see if I have a closed bit or not. Okay, this is this is closed. Okie pokey. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okay, that's how it goes, guys. That's how it goes. It's as easy as pie. So Javi will put the link for the jumpy tool on the video for you in case you want to come over and get one. We would love to provide you with one. We have lots of them in stock right now. Personally, I'm not telling you to buy 10 of them, but I got 10 of them. You saw how many I had on my hands? I got probably 15 of them laying around here, just down here in this workshop, plus upstairs in the office because I can't live without this thing now. I just can't. So I would encourage you to just get one, give it a try, practice with it to get good at it, and you'll probably find that those connections go a lot slicker and a lot faster for you. A lot less wear on your wrists and hands, too. Okay, so having said that, off it comes. Back the jump rings go in the box, or the little yeah drawer, whatever you want to call it. And off we go. Javi's going to render this video, make it wonderful for you. And it was nice to meet with you today and talk to you about the wonderful jumpy tool. And until next week, we hope to have something even more wonderful to show you. Okay, so and here's the wolf tools. Have a wonderful day. Love you. Come back. Bye.